Uh, the Mountain West portion of our basketball night begins in Clune Arena, Air Force Academy, and Utah State. Rich Waltz along with Tim Doyle, Air Force with the basketball, Utah State with the lead, and Utah State number 23 in the net, 12-2 and 2-0 and in conference. Air Force has lost their first two games, and they've fallen behind by big margins early in those games. Here tonight, they trail by four, four minutes in. This is Bearstow spinning, falling away. Much improved is Sean Bearstow. And he stretches the lead to 9-3. Bearstow's got five in the ballgame. Yeah, Utah State may be the best team in college basketball you have never heard of. Now, last time they were in this gym, though, Rich Waltz, they walked away with an L. So Air Force is young. They need to build confidence right now. Mountain West play has been tough for them. And as you said, they got off to some really rough starts. That's a strong drive by Camden Vanderswalk. He has not played well in the first two Mountain West games, so that's a good sign. He only had nine points over the last three games, and he had back-to-back 20-point -back games in November, so. That's a foul on that play. I'm not sure whom the foul is on. It's going to go on Air Force. For those of you watching our free streaming coverage, it'll conclude after the commercial break, but we'll continue on CBS Sports Network. We promise that you can find us by going to cbssportsnetwork.com slash Channel Finder. 9-5 Utah State on top of Air Force. Rich Waltz along with Tim Doyle. Welcome to the Air Force Academy. Let's put Tim right to work with our AT&T 5G fast analysis. Stephen Ashworth right now is playing at a very high level for Utah State. Well, Utah State is a team is number one in the country at shooting the three, 43%. Check out Ashworth. Man, this is game. This is practice. Shoot 53% from three. And everybody on the Aggies has a high basketball IQ. They move the basketball, and they can certainly fill it up from deep. Let's take a look at the keys tonight. And that is a key for Air Force, guarding the three, also getting back on defense. As for Utah State, Ashworth's in the game. He comes off the bench and move that basketball. They are as good as anyone in college basketball, making that extra pass to get the shot they want. Two fouls on Jake Hydebreeder for Air Force. And that's a key number. He's in the ball game right now. Joe Scott has him in. Ryland Jones back cut there. And that's terrific work from Z Hamoda from Jones. A six point Utah State lead. Now, Hamoda was very good against Fresno. He took six shots. He made five of them at 13 points. He's been playing well as late, the 6'7 sophomore. This is Jeffrey Mills. Mills, a combo guard. That probably should have been a travel, and it is. Ryland Jones. This, they have essentially two point guards, and they're both really good. Yeah, that was an absolute great look by Jones, and you could tell that was a set play out of a timeout. Jones, two-time Mr. Basketball in Utah in high school. He's got an amazing feel for the game, nearly three to one assist to turnover ratio. Ashworth, they want to force him to take twos. Jones heaves a three, and that's an air ball. Utah State is the best three-point shooting team in the country, and Air Force is one of the best around in the West at defending the three. Petritus goes to the bucket. Reedus Petritus, four-time freshman of the week in the Mountain West. Ashworth driving. Atkin cleans the glass. Ashworth rotates. Hamoda is held. That was Mills. Joe Scott in his third year, but his second tour at the Air Force Academy, the first one, he, he took a team from the very depths of all of college basketball to the NCAA tournament. He's trying to do it again. The Falcons last year were 11 and 18. Progress there, four Mountain West wins. They had a great non-conference, but they've run into an absolute buzzsaw 
in their first three conference games. Three of the best teams in the conference. Three teams in the top 53 of the net. Funk, that's too easy. Yeah, Funk, a uh, sixth-year player going up against a freshman. It looked like that on that play. Carter Murphy is in. The bench is in right now for Air Force. Petritus is part of that group, along with Bo Becker. This is Murphy. Ethan Taylor, a starter. Murphy in the blocks. And he's bumped and bodied. Now, Utah State, of course, is led by Ryan Odom in his second year. He came over from UMBC. They had a terrific run there. And, of course, that historic upset of Virginia in the NCAA tournament. Last year, 18 and 16. They got to the NIT, lost to Oregon. This year, though, 12 and 2, and number 23 in the net. And the good news for the Mountain West, there's two teams that are ranked even higher than that in the net in San Diego State and New Mexico. It has been a great start of this basketball season for this conference. New Mexico will be on your air following this game, and they have not lost. Shot clock is down. Becker's three out of desperation. All right, you've seen now seven minutes of basketball here. What's going wrong and what's going right for these two teams? Yeah, I think the biggest thing I've noticed is the youth for Air Force. Like, they don't have a guy right now that feels comfortable enough to be selfish for the good of their team. That usually is an older guy. And we're playing all these freshmen and sophomores when they're struggling, they don't know who to go to. And Utah State right now is spreading Air Force out and then driving their bigger players to the bucket to get points. 14 points in the paint for Utah State, all but that one free throw. Becker, and he finishes the drive. They like Bo Becker a lot. He's one of the super sophomores that Joe Scott has right now. Ashworth with it. This is Akin, and he's fouled by Ethan Taylor. That was actually Carter Murphy on that drive. He also is a sophomore and super. If you don't know what grade they are, just say freshman or sophomore, you're going to shoot a pretty high percentage. <laughs> Atkin is a guy who was actually on the roster, played for Ryan Odom at UMBC when they pulled off that upset and knocked off UVA in that 1 versus 16 game. He is one of the best bench players in the country. In fact, he leads the country for bench players in double doubles. He's got four of them already this year. Well, Utah State's bench, you could argue, is better than their starters. Right now, 33 points a game off the bench. That leads the Mountain West. It's ranked in the top 10 in the country. Now, this team's deep. Now, I'm not kidding. Like, maybe one of the best teams in college basketball you've never heard of. And you start going through the wins that they've had this year, there's been a lot of impressive, quote unquote, mid major squads. Problem is, no one wants to play them. Taylor, Petritus off the glass, and the rebound knocked away. Ashworth has it. Remember, Jake Heidbreeder, the best three-point shooter for Air Force, on the bench early with two fouls. Idlerock blocked by Petritus. Air Force actually second in the conference in block shots. Hey, Utah State, they say we're 23 in the net. Where are the numbers next to our name? Why are we ranked in the country right now? What do we need to do? Well, they're up seven on the road at Air Force. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? And by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs, and a quick start by Utah State, 16 to 9. Told you Utah State's the best three point shooting team in the country. That's really opening up the paint right now. Well, they are taking what the defense is giving them, and Air Force is basically saying, all right, you're going to make. 42 pointers to get to 80 points go out there and do it and hats off to Ryan Odom He's like, okay, go out there and attack Utah State comes into the game averaging 11 made threes per game so far Zero made threes instead dominating points in the paint 14 to 6 
You saw Joe Scott. 15 to 2, they fell down to San Diego State. 17 to 3, they fell down to Nevada. And that's a turnover on the inbound by Utah State. And he was adamant with us at shoot around today was Joe Scott. We can't afford to fall behind by that much. We have to throw some punches early. Well, they were down 14 and 13, so being down seven is nothing. This is actually an important possession. Get a little momentum here. Out of a timeout, you get a stop. McCreary into the corner, and Murphy misses the three. And here comes Utah State. They can do everything. They can run, they can spread it, they can shoot the three, and they can hurt you in tight. Bearstow spinning, left hand. Wow. Bearstow, seven already to go with three rebounds. He's made some tough mid-range there with the left hand, previous possession with the turnaround and excellent backdoor cut there. That is a staple of that Joe Scott Princeton style offense back screen. Sets up Petritus. Petritus off the bench, has a couple buckets. Lead is seven for Utah State. Who has yet to hit a three. They've only attempted three of them. But they haven't needed them. They've been getting such great looks inside the arc. Taylor thought about a three. This is Becker. Murphy missed it. And a rare offensive rebound for Air Force. McCreary in low. And that's a turnover, and that's a killer. And you almost got to live with that with such a young team, as you pointed out, almost all freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, and that's kind of this growing process at Air Force. There you got Joe Scott takes over the program. This is exactly what he did the first time. This was a job that was deemed impossible to win. You came here and called it what? <laughs> Go ahead, say it. It was somewhat of a graveyard. And he came here and, and, and established a team that went he got into the tournament once. Yes, and set the foundation for more success. Multiple tournaments, uh, an NIT Final Four. This style of offense is a perfect fit here. Ashworth unloads 54% from distance. He leads the nation in three-point shooting. He's hit 55 of them. This is the largest lead. It's at 10. And Air Force can't afford to let it get away. Becker and the Falcons struggling from distance. They're now one of seven. And of course, they're without high breeder, their best three point shooter. He's on the bench with two fouls. Shulga, a little back cut there. And that's going to stay with Utah State. Crowd doesn't like it. And Air Force's bench doesn't like it. Tim Doyle, kick off your morning with the. Serie A soccer action. Roma takes on Bologna tomorrow at 10.30 Eastern. Cremonese clashing with Ju Juventus right here on CBS Sports. It streams live on Paramount+. Plus. I know Juventus is one of your favorites in Serie A. Ashworth, that's deep. That's good. And Utah State is showing off right now. 24 to 11. And they are dominating Air Force midway through this first half. And Joe Scott's got Hyde Breeder back in the game with two fouls. Hyde Breeder, jumper on the way. That's short. Becker with the rebound. Hyde Breeder is hit. And that's Shulga with the foul. Nobody better in the country percentage-wise from distance. I mean, do you see the rotation on the ball? I mean, Tom Amansky led to back to back to back to back state championships. He could do a demo on how to shoot the three. I would watch it. <laughs> Tom Amansky making an appearance here on the show. Hit the cutoff, man. Fred McGriff. Oh, uh, my, my point is, yes, it's a video that gets results. Right. I, you know, no VHS. All right, we could just put make a little YouTube video or something. But the form is perfect, flawless. And, and you know what? Hybrider's got that same type of form. It's just in a younger version. 
And they're both guarding each other right now. Becker hunting for a back cut. Petritus will take it right to the bucket, get fouled, and score. Yeah, I'm comfortable saying this. Petritus is going to be awesome. Um, he, he drove left, he scored right, he took contact. Now, this is something that you've got to kind of dive into. Air Force is playing freshmen and sophomores. These kids are 18 and 19 years old. Utah State is playing the 160 year senior, multiple 50 year seniors. Air Force is playing men against Utah State. And, and that, I think, is the only difference in the game is the maturity and experience that Utah State has. If this Air Force team stays together, by the end of the, this conference season, they're going to grow a lot. And by next year, they're going to be much, much better. Shoulder driving. And part of the deal is toughness. Funk, mid-range 15-footer. I mean, when Funk started college, Petritus was in fifth grade. Like, that's all you got to know. Like, dude, you can figure that all out. And then, and that's the modern-day college game. Obviously, with the COVID year, transfer portal, and certainly Air Force at a disadvantage there. Mills, and he misses in the lane. Funk starts the break. Oh, that's a great play by Mills. And he couldn't hold it. 26-14, Utah State. Uh, Utah State is playing with a swag. They're playing with uh, some confidence. And they're playing with a little funk. They're up 12 right now. The Mountain West is good. This may be their best team. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. 26-14 Utah State on top of Air Force. Eight minutes left first half. Tomorrow, 5 Eastern. Lots more college basketball. Some really good teams. How about number 23, Charleston, taking on North Carolina a and A-10. We've got Loyola Chicago at Davidson, and then DePaul at Butler tomorrow on CBS Sports Network. Solid seniors, something that Air Force doesn't have that these two, DePaul and Butler, do have. Uh, DePaul went to Minnesota, knocked off the Golden Gophers on their home floor. And Butler is a dangerous team as well. Big East this year, a lot of different teams that could hurt you. I think the biggest thing with Utah State that I have seen is another point in a paint for the Aggies is that experience with all of the transfers and roster changeover. If you have a continuity, you are so far ahead of the game. And this is a team that plays well together. They pass it extremely well. And they have multiple guys that can put the ball on the floor and create their own shot. There's just not a lot of teams in college basketball that can do that. And Air Force obviously doesn't have a rim protector. They lost their best shot blocker in Lucas Mormon with a shoulder injury four games in. Shulga hits a free throw, and the lead has ballooned to 15. And you see Utah State hot from the field. But obviously, when you're shooting from the paint most of the night, you're going to shoot well. High breeder knocks home a 16-footer. And that's the way out of this right now for Air Force, is that guy and possibly some three-point shots. Yeah, from an offensive standpoint, but defensively, you're going to have to be a little tougher on the defensive end and keep Utah State out of the paint. They're just getting there at will. And it's all penetration. They're not really dumping it into the paint. It's like that, Dorius with two hands. This team has kind of an old school feel, almost an old soul to it, the way they move the ball and play well together. You know, they're two possessions away from being undefeated. Yes. Yeah, I mean, their losses, Weber State by three, SMU and Hawaii by three. That one is a air ball. That one coming from Ethan Taylor. Funk knocked out of bounds. Yeah, I love a patient post up and when you start dribbling there it's almost like when Wayne Gretzky used to go behind the net late in his career and just watch the offense unfold when you're able to dribble in the post like that 
There's so many different things you can do based on what the defense does. That time, some help, find your cutter, easy dunk. Dorius, he's really improved in his four years. Bearstow takes a peek at the shot clock and walks. And it's a turnover for Utah State. They've got their pieces just fit together. They're two guards, Ashworth and Ryland Jones. They're not big, but they're incredibly intelligent. They're deadly three-point shooters. They can penetrate, and they can both defend. Well, I think it says a lot about a team when the best player is willing to come off the bench, and maybe even the second best player as well and best rebound is able to come off the bench. That's just a team that's buying it. And that's Ashworth and Atkin you're talking about. And Scholga kind of is the glue guy who ends up getting you 12 and 5 and has four and a half assists a game. And it's a foul on Utah State. Yeah, you know what's great about Utah State is Air Force, you can tell their game plan is guard the three, be aggressive, two feet above the three-point line, and Utah State's like, okay, cool. We're going to just take it in and get into the paint. And this is what the defense is giving us? Well, we're going to take it. That's a great point because they're only two of five from distance. And they're averaging 11 made a game. Back cut and a miss on a dunk. And the long rebound out to Shulga, up to Bearstow, lob and Atkin with two hands. And Joe Scott is not happy, as you would expect. Utah State 35, Air Force 16, back in 30. You make a mistake against Utah State, and they'll make you pay on the other end. Yeah, I really, a, a microcosm of this game. Air Force finally gets the rim, a dunk opportunity. They're not able to capitalize, and the Aggies go, oh, no problem. We're not going to take any dribbles, and we're going to pass the ball twice, and we're going to dunk on the other end. Great continuity right now for Utah State, and hey, they're getting recognized. Number 23 in the net coming into this game. Uh, numbers don't lie. This team's for real. High breeder. Another bucket for him. High breeder playing with Two personal fouls. This is Funk. For Atkin, and it's out of bounds. It stays with Utah State. 35 18. Of course, later on tonight, we have the lone remaining unbeaten in the country, number 21, New Mexico at Fresno State. You know, Fresno held Utah State to only 67 points. That was the first game the Aggies have won this year. Not breaking 70. Another bucket next to the rim, Rich. That stays with Air Force. Utah State offensively is a, a beautiful thing. I mean, just ask the, the national rankings. Three-point percentage per game. The bench points you talked about with Akin and, and uh, Ashworth coming off the bench. They share the ball as well as anybody. Ryan Odom there on the sidelines. You know, waited patiently for the right job. Well, you know, when he won that game at UMBC, he was a hot coach, a hot name. Ended up going to a, a school that a great fit, where he could teach the game at a high level. This team is exactly how he wants to coach, guys that really understand the game. And also, Coach Odom, can we get a look at the Jays he's got on? Nice work. I mean, no one else has the same Jordans on as Ryan Odom. And I just say, say shout out to him and his Jordan 4s. A lot going right for Utah State right now. Mills misses a three. Air Force from distance is one of nine now. And Utah State has made their last nine shots. That's why you're sitting at 37-18. And a foul by Ethan Taylor. For the third straight Mountain West game, Air Force has been popped in the mouth, and they're down big, 37-18.
37-18, Utah State on top of Air Force coming up. AT&T at the half. The Brent Stover Band featuring Paulie Zerbiak, Roy Hibbert, and Gary Parrish on drums. They're all standing by in our New York studio. Get you up to speed on all the college basketball action. AT&T at the half. Tim Doyle working hard today. His mid-majors to watch. Kent State has Final Four capability. They went to Houston with leading the Cougars late in the second half, went to Gonzaga, gave the Zags all they could handle. Iona's got Rick Pitino on the sidelines. They're fun to watch. They will not lose a home game in conference. Princeton, head coach Mitch Henderson, that's a team that could easily be undefeated. Santa Clara and Herb Sendex done a great job as well. Joe Scott's son plays on that Princeton team. That's right, Jack Scott. And it was interesting to talk to Joe and ask him, because this is his second tour here in Colorado Springs at Air Force, did he regret leaving the first time? Were you ready for that question? It got into a little bit of a therapy session, didn't it? Yeah, well, look, he, he certainly had success here. It's great that he's back. And I think he's comfortable that the game's changed a little bit since he's been gone, right? Ashworth and Petritus with the block. No reset on the shot clock. Hamoda rises. Two more. Penetration in the lane. Easy bucket. Uh, Hamoda's a, a really talented guy. I mean, to think 6 7, put the ball on the floor, pull up. Utah State's just in that rhythm right now offensively. I think that they can get whatever they want. High breeder that stays with Air Force. Now, look, you ran the Princeton offense for yep. Bill Carmody at uh, Northwestern. Joe Scott was Pete Curl's point guard. He's run it everywhere. How has he, you know, evolved in the offensive scheme of things from then to now? I, I think he had to because, you know, when Pete Curl started running it at Princeton, it was a 45-second shot clock. Now, at 30, the game is faster, so you're just not, you know, quote-unquote, holding the ball like they used to. That's Ethan Taylor, a much-needed three. Yeah, we thought this could be a, a matchup of similar teams, but the experience of Utah State, they've stayed very disciplined on defense and then on offense. Watch how they move that basketball. Hamoda again in tight. He's the very first college basketball player from Bahrain. And he's a sophomore and has a really high ceiling. We got a chance to spend a few minutes with Z before the game, and he was a pleasure to be around. Petritus is going to get to the line. Z Hamoda. He is 6'7", 170. Basketball in Bahrain, there's, you know, like, there's no high school or anything like that. His older brother liked basketball, and so he figured he'd follow his older brother. And at 14, he got a call from the national team because he was kind of tall. And, and that's where he got his experience, international play not high school or AAU. And the uh, reason for number 24 is to honor the late great Kobe Bryant. It's the first game he watched was Lakers Celtics. And he said, who's that guy in 24? He's pretty good. And hence, where's his number to honor the Mamba? Ashworth back in. Hamoda came from out of bounds to get that pass. You know, just, just eyeball test, Homoda would be the best player on Air Force. And on Utah State, he's the eighth or ninth man. Just to kind of give the people at home the range of talent difference right now in these two teams. Would you agree with that? I would. And, and Petritus, that's a three. This guy might give him a run for the money, though. I'm talking about this fabulous freshman, yeah. Redis Petritus. I, I think... High breeders, a, a talented guy. I think Petritus is going to be excellent here. But Hamoda's got almost a pro body with that length and that touch. Ashworth, this is Idle Rock. And that's basket interference offensive. Yeah, and guess who, right? Yeah, yeah. Hamoda, we were just talking about him. So, and every day in practice, him get, going up against guys like. Bearstow and Funk, older guys that have been around the block. Like, old guys know all the tricks. Pull the shorts and get away with stuff. He's going to get better every day in practice. 
approaching a minute left first half. Dominant performance from the paint for Utah State. They haven't needed the three. High breeder bangs home a three. When he gets hot, he can roll, and Air Force needs some roll. Yeah, I mean, if you're Air Force, you're going to get the ball twice here. If you can get this to single digits, be enormous by half. Bearstow, one hand floater, nine for Bearstow, the senior out of Australia. Titus is fouled, and he'll get free throws. He'll shoot one and one. Yeah, and an opportunity to get the ball back as well, because with 34 left on the game clock, they're going to get a two for one. You know, it only happens twice a game in college. It, it does frustrate me that the coaches don't give players some rain, that when there's 45 seconds, 42 seconds, they should almost have a quick hitter to know we can get two shots versus their one. I know I went to Northwestern, but this is just a simple math equation here. Like, we get two, they get one. And nobody plays like that in college basketball. Petritus. Free throw is up. And he misses. So 43-28, Air Force has made up a little bit of distance. And Ashworth and Utah State are going to play what it looks like for a last shot here. Amoda driving, not for the last shot. Petritus with the foul, a hard foul, and Hamoda's going to the line. Yeah, I think that says a lot about Hamoda that he's the guy they go to at the end of the shot clock in order to create a play and turn the corner and get to the free throw line. Hamoda free throw is up and good. Now Hamoda had a game. Now granted it's Westminster so let's take that with a, a tad of a grain of salt but he was six of seven from three. I don't care who you're playing. It, it is a game and there's referees and the lights are on. Six seven from three you have an ability to shoot that three. He could be a D and three guy for a long time. Final seconds, first half. Ethan Taylor, clock is down, got to get it up. Hyde Breeder separates and misses the jumper. And a frustrating first half for the Air Force Academy. Utah State number 23 in the net, and they look every bit of it. Yeah, confident, experienced, disciplined on defense, an absolute clinic in that first half for the Aggies. Well, first half in the books in Utah State. Trying to go to 2 and 0 in the Mountain West. They look good. After the break, we'll send you to Brent the Gang in New York with AT&T at the half. You're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky.